Do you think there will be a strong marriage for people who have serious trust problems? After all, marriage is something that is built on trust and mutual respect. You can't just accuse your spouse of cheating if there is no ironclad evidence. But everything changes when third parties who provoke interfere in the relationship. Tim Chase sat quietly at the bar, awaiting the takeout sandwiches he had ordered. His closest friend and business partner, Will Davis, occupied his time with phone calls from their truck, leaving Tim alone inside to collect their lunch. It was uncommon for an upscale establishment like David's Place to offer takeout, but the quality of the food always drew Tim back whenever he was in the vicinity. As Tim pondered his afternoon agenda, a familiar laugh caught his attention. Driven by curiosity, he rose from his seat and moved a few steps to gain a vantage point of the dining area. His heart sank as he beheld the scene before him. Seated in a secluded corner were Tim's sister-in-law, Dana, and Matt Larson. Their behavior was far too intimate for two married individuals who were not in the company of their spouses. Tim felt a surge of disgust when he saw Matt's hand drop to Dana's shoulder and then stroke her through her blouse. Despite his disgust, Tim automatically took his phone out of his pocket and looked through his contact list. He felt he had to act. The only way out seemed to be to inform Dana's husband who was currently sitting in the truck in the parking lot. His next call was from Mandy, his wife. Tim foresaw her deep disappointment in her own sister, and yet he couldn't justify hiding such a fateful discovery from her. He believed that honesty always wins in the end. When Tim found Will's number, his disbelief reached a peak when Mandy suddenly came out of the bathroom and joined Dana and Matt at their table. What was particularly outrageous was that Matt had his hand on Dana without any embarrassment. Strangely, Mandy seemed unaffected by this scandalous scene. At that moment, Will had picked up his phone. Tim struggled to find words as his mind raced through various unpleasant scenarios. He stayed silent until Will demanded to know the reason for his call. Will, get over here. There's something happening that you should see. Tim replied before hanging up. In less than 30 seconds, Will entered the room and found Tim waiting for him. Will shot Tim a questioning look, to which Tim simply gestured towards the dining room. Will briefly glanced at the dining area before turning back to Tim, confusion evident on his face. Both men were startled by the sound of Dana's laughter coming from the dining room. Will quickly retracted his head and meticulously surveyed the room once more. Tim could tell when Will's gaze eventually locked onto Dana. A scowl etched across his face as he briskly strode across the dining area. Tim, still clutching his phone, hurried to catch up with his friend. He had just switched to video mode moments before Will entered the restaurant. Despite his seething anger, Will moved with surprising stealth. He reached Matt Larson before anyone at the table realized Dana's husband was present. With considerable force, Will's fist connected squarely with the center of Matt's smug grin. The impact sent Matt sprawling backward, the chair beneath him breaking as it collided with the tile floor. Going on his short trip, Matt accidentally grabbed Dana by the melon. Glancing at Larson, who was in a semi-conscious state, Will deliberately twisted his face. Damn you, Matt Larson. If I ever see you again, I'll send you to the hospital, you worthless piece of shit. What are you doing here? Dana asked in confusion. This is not what it seems, it's just a friend. And that's your explanation? Is that all you have? Will laughed bitterly. Just to have lunch? Does he always touch you during lunch? Dana gasped as she looked at her open melon. She hurriedly adjusted her bra, her cheeks flushed with embarrassment. It was an accident. Matt was just trying to stay on his feet so he wouldn't fall backwards. Nothing untoward happened. Your reaction was unjustified and risky. I never realized how often and easily you cheat, Dana, Will retorted before turning to Tim. You witnessed Matt grabbing Dana by the melon, didn't you, Tim? Yes. I saw it and recorded it, Tim replied, continuing to film. I'll send you a copy as soon as this scandal is over. Tim, 
You won't do anything like that, Mandy interjected, finally speaking up. You will not interfere in Dana's personal affairs. She needs to work this out with Will. Your interference will only complicate the situation. Delete this video. I'm glad I'm still writing this down, Tim grumbled. You said that you and Dana went shopping for Christmas shopping. And yet here you are a hundred miles away helping your promiscuous sister pick up some worthless guy. And you're saying that my behavior is inappropriate? It is impossible to believe in this situation. I'm watching her live and it's still hard for me to come to terms with it. That's why my video will be crucial. I could forget some of the details of this outrage, but the video will serve as a useful reminder. Did you just call me a promiscuous woman? Dana practically spat it out. Your lucky will didn't knock you out. Your insults will not be forgotten. Damn it, it looks like you've already forgotten about your lover, Tim retorted, pointing at the figure writhing on the floor. He's trying to get up. He's got wounds everywhere. It looks like he could use the help of a slutty woman. Will, let's get something to eat and get out of here while we still can. If any of these jerks try to turn the story against us, I'll have video evidence to clarify everything. Mandy mulled over her husband's remarks as the two men prepared to depart. Tim, I haven't done anything wrong. There's no reason for you to be angry with me. You need to stay and help us take care of Matt. He needs medical attention. It seems like his nose might be broken. I'd put money on it, Tim chuckled, turning to Mandy. Will had quite a bit of momentum when he connected with that idiot's face. I wouldn't bother helping Larson even if he were in trouble. You two have messed up our marriages and who knows what else. I still remember the wise words my father used to say. Let me guess, Will interjected. Once something's messed up, it can't be fixed. Exactly. Let's grab lunch and some beers. Might as well get used to feeling well messed up since we'll be experiencing it for a while, Tim replied, gesturing with air quotes. As they exited the room, Tim once again glanced behind him. Dana and Mandy were assisting Matt in locating a functional chair, while their waitress observed with wide-eyed amazement. Tim collected their lunch order and then stopped at a gas station to purchase a case of beer. With the beer in hand, he drove to a budget motel and checked in, all the while Will remained completely silent. Come on, Will, Tim urged. We need to eat and have a drink. We always think better with a little alcohol, so let's head to our room and start brainstorming. Noticing Tim's truck absent from the driveway upon her return home, Mandy found her 17-year-old son, Trent, playing a video game. Did your father get in touch with you? Mandy asked, trying to keep her tone neutral. Yeah, he called me a little while ago, Trent replied. What did he say? Mandy pressed. The typical situation that arises when parents go through a divorce. You both still care for Beth and me, but you can't continue living together. You and Aunt Dana are dishonest and show no regard for Dad and Uncle Will. That sort of thing. Tim said that? He informed you about our divorce? Was he serious? Well, he sounded pretty drunk, but he did seem serious. You mentioned at breakfast that you were going to the outlets with Aunt Dana today. Instead, you went north and ended up at David's place with Matt Larson. Dad mentioned that Larson was all over Aunt Dana when he and Uncle Will found you at the restaurant. Will went unnoticed until he punched Larson in the nose, knocking him backward. I wish I had witnessed that. Oh, Dad said he'd send me the video later so I'll get to see it, Trent added. I explicitly told your father I didn't want that video shown. Actually, I insisted it be deleted, Mandy fumed. Well, to give Dad credit, you did mention going shopping today. He simply took you at your word. But now that he's aware of your somewhat flexible relationship with the truth, he might question whether you were sincere about wanting the video deleted. How can he trust what you say? I don't need your sarcastic remarks, Mandy retorted. I told a small lie to avoid hurting anyone. Apart from that, I always tell the truth. Did you know Aunt Dana was involved with Larson? Trent interjected. Who says she was involved with Larson? They're just friends, Mandy insisted. Is that the story you're sticking to? Trent pressed. 
I don't understand how you two can remain married. It's surprising you've lasted this long. Are you accusing me of lying? Mandy challenged. Not explicitly, Trent replied. But Dad did mention that Dana admitted to Uncle Will she'd been with Larson a few times and you helped cover it up. Can you believe it? Why didn't she bother to give me a heads up that she spilled the beans to Will? I've been trying to cover for her. Well, there goes her honesty streak, remarked Trent dryly. Dad mentioned I'll be staying here with you until I head off to college next fall. Beth isn't thrilled about her options, but she's young. She'll bounce back. So your dad has everything planned out already? He made these decisions while he was half in the bag and didn't bother to consult me? Mandy had been confident she could persuade Tim that she only fibbed to help her sister. She never betrayed Tim, and she never would. It was all just a misunderstanding. The truth was, even after Dana confessed to Will, she continued to lie to protect her sister. This troubled Tim, a man known for his honesty and fairness. He often expressed disdain for liars and the harm their deceit caused. Trent shared his father's aversion to dishonesty. He swiftly ended a relationship upon discovering his girlfriend had lied about canceling a date. Despite her pleas for forgiveness, Trent remained resolute. Now Tim spoke of divorce with seriousness, as relayed by Trent. Mandy wondered how a minor mistake could escalate so dramatically. She questioned Tim's rigidity, knowing he'd go to great lengths for Will. Mandy believed Tim would even lie to preserve Will's marriage. She struggled to understand why aiding her sister was perceived as so wrong. What was she to do when Dana sought her help? The more Mandy dwelled on it, the more resolute she became that she hadn't committed any wrongdoing, or at least nothing Tim wouldn't have done for Will. Tim was simply a hypocrite. Mandy resolved to prepare dinner for her children and herself. If Tim returned home expecting a meal, he'd have to fend for himself. She was determined to weather the storm and even make Tim apologize for his behavior. As Mandy set the food on the table, Beth entered the kitchen, clearly discontent. I might just tell the judge I want to live with Dad, Beth disclosed. Helping Aunt Dana cheat on Uncle Will was really low, Mom. Will's a great guy. He and Dad are the best of friends. I don't understand what you and Aunt Dana were thinking. I didn't get caught cheating on your father, Mandy retorted to Beth. I was simply in the wrong place at the wrong time. I couldn't betray Tim by informing him about Dana's boyfriend. He would have informed Will as soon as he knew. Interesting choice of words, Mom. You said you didn't get caught cheating on Dad. You didn't say you've never cheated, just that you were never caught. I never betrayed Tim, Mandy retorted angrily. All I did was protect Dana a few times. She's my sister, and I'll always support her. Family bonds are strong. Do you really think aiding Aunt Dana in cheating on Uncle Will was helping her? Beth asked, clearly incredulous. How has that turned out for both of you? Now Dad and Uncle Will see that you both are dishonest, and at least one of you is unfaithful. Since you've shown you're willing to deceive, how can Dad trust you haven't betrayed him? Tim knows I'd never be unfaithful to him, and I've never lied about anything except Dana's affair. He would have done the same for Will. Maybe he already has. Who knows? Tim doesn't get to act morally superior with me, Mandy asserted. For all we know, both your father and uncle could have had affairs. Beth expressed disbelief, shaking her head slowly. Have you completely lost your mind? We're certain that Dad and Uncle Will have never been dishonest. How can we be so sure? Because they've never, and I mean never deceived or misled anyone. I'd bet my life that Dad has never cheated on you. The unfortunate part is that I wouldn't risk my life on your loyalty. Now it was Mandy's turn to be astonished. You think I could betray your father? Just because I tried to defend my sister, you assume I'm a cheater? I never said that, Mom. What I'm saying is that I don't have the same level of confidence in your fidelity as I do in Dad's. I didn't feel this way earlier when you said you were going to the outlets with Aunt Dana, but your credibility has taken a hit today. That's on you. 
Before Mandy could respond, her cell phone interrupted with a call from Dana. It's Dana. I need to take this, but we'll continue this conversation later. Hey, Dana. I heard you came clean to Will about everything and left me in the dark. I was still denying your affair when Trent informed me that you had already admitted to cheating. My mistake, sis, I've been making a lot of poor choices lately. I don't understand why you didn't intervene when you found out about me and Matt. It would have been tough to hear then, but it could have saved me from the mess I'm dealing with now. Hold on, Mandy objected. You practically begged me to help you keep your affair under wraps. I was just trying to look out for you and prevent you from getting hurt. Well, you didn't do a great job, did you? Dana fired back. You should have put a stop to it as soon as you found out. I'm lucky Will decided to give me another chance. Wait, are you saying Will took you back? He forgave you? Mandy inquired. How did you manage that? He seemed furious at the restaurant. You won't believe it. I called Will and came clean about everything. I made sure to tell him the whole truth. You know how Will and Tim are about honesty. I thought he was going to leave me, but I knew my only shot was to be completely honest and genuinely sorry. Will mentioned he had been discussing fidelity, honesty, forgiveness, and partnerships with Tim. He said Tim reminded him that we're not just spouses, but partners, too. I can't believe a few cliches convinced Will to forgive you, Mandy remarked. There must be more to it. You got it, sis. Will shared with me that during their trip to Harrisburg for that two-day indoor lawn and garden show two years back, he encountered a woman who took quite a liking to him. While Tim was busy inspecting equipment, Will found himself engaged in conversation with a younger, attractive woman at the bar. At least that's how Will recounted the encounter. Will messaged Tim, advising him to stay away from their room for a couple of hours, as he had met someone, Dana recounted. According to Will, by the time he settled the bar tab, Tim was livid, angrier than Dana had ever seen him. Tim insisted that Will would have to fight and defeat him before he'd allow that woman into their room. He even threatened to expose Will as a cheater to Dana, their kids, you, their parents, and anyone else who might care. I had no idea about this, Dana. Tim never mentioned a word, Mandy confessed. That's because... My foolish husband saw reason eventually. He was furious with Tim for a few days. Dana said the drive back home was tense, with them not exchanging a word. But it seems they've patched things up, Mandy observed. They still behave like brothers. Dana explained that Will gradually realized Tim had done him a great favor by preventing him from potentially ruining his marriage and family. Will confessed feeling ashamed and unworthy of Tim's friendship, even offering to dissolve their partnership if Tim no longer wished to work with him. Do you know what your tough husband said to Will? Mandy asked. He told Will he loved him like a brother. He'd rather sacrifice their friendship than witness Will hurting you and the kids. Tim made it clear that he understood the destructive nature of infidelity, comparing it to the damage it would cause if you cheated on him. That's quite heavy, Dana, remarked Mandy. Doesn't it make your cheating even worse? One would think so, Dana replied. But thankfully, Will seems to be more forgiving because he almost strayed himself. He pointed out that I lacked a strong sports system, unlike him. That was the crucial difference. Mandy found herself at a loss for how to react to Dana's remark. She had kept her sister's affair a secret, even resorting to lying to her own family to shield Dana. Yet now, Dana was suggesting that Tim was the better friend because he wouldn't tolerate the behavior that Mandy had allowed with Dana. Is Will back home now? Mandy asked, trying to divert the conversation slightly. I'm curious if Tim might drop by soon. Will mentioned that Tim's pretty drunk. They had to ask the clerk at the rundown motel they're staying in to fetch another case of beer after they polished off the first one. At least, that they were responsible enough not to drive. They're staying at a motel instead of coming home. It seems like Tim is just as upset as Will about all of this. 
I should talk to him and straighten things out, Mandy declared. Dana rebuffed with... Good luck with that. She relayed Will's message that Tim is even more upset than he is. Tim never anticipated being deceived to his face. Now doubts loom over your fidelity and commitment to the marriage. We'll mention Tim feeling like he's living with a stranger, unsure of your true self. That's absurd. You know I've never betrayed Tim. I even cautioned you about getting involved with Matt. I was only trying to shield you and prevent Will from discovering and divorcing you, Mandy argued. Well, turns out it backfired. Hindsight is clear. Now I see I was foolish and you weren't much better, Dana retorted. You should have confronted me and threatened to expose my infidelity to Will. That might have halted my reckless behavior. Instead, you aided in my deceit, which didn't do me any favors. I can hardly believe what I just heard. Tim and Will caught us at a restaurant where you were sitting next to your lover with his hand on your chest. Will punched your boyfriend and Tim was really mad at me. Will has forgiven you, but Tim is still angry and talking about divorce because I lied to cover for you. And now you're saying I shouldn't have even tried to help you keep your secret. I'm not as good a friend as Tim. That's pretty spot on, sis. You know Tim's character, yet you endangered your marriage trying to assist me in cheating on mine. You must have known Tim would be furious when he found out. He's like a damn Boy Scout, for heaven's sake. Mandy stayed silent as she pondered her situation. How could she have been so foolish in her world she could always count on one thing? Tim's dedication to his family. Of course he'd be angry when he discovered she lied to him. That wasn't unexpected. He had never given her any reason to believe he'd tolerate or forgive her for lying. Mandy came to the realization that one of her proudest accomplishments in life had been the level of trust and reliance she and her husband shared, a cornerstone of what she believed a marriage should embody. However, she acknowledged that she had foolishly jeopardized this foundation through her actions. Grimly, Mandy confessed to Dana, I need to focus on repairing my marriage. You were right. I messed up. I knew it was wrong, yet I still proceeded. I want to place blame on you, but the truth is, the fault lies solely with me. I lack the courage to insist you stay away from Matt. Now I must face the consequences. I need to leave to contemplate how I can earn Tim's forgiveness. Beth inquired. Mom, what's your plan now? Aunt Dana seems to have emerged unscathed, but you're in a tough spot. You understand Dad better than Trent and I. And we know better than to deceive him. You're correct, Beth. At present, my only hope lies in the fact that your father has forgiven me in the past. He possesses a generous heart, and family means everything to him, Mandy affirmed. All I can think about is pleading with Tim to forgive me. I was completely in the wrong. It won't happen again if he can forgive me this time. That might do the trick, Mom, especially if you're wearing that yellow sundress that flatters your figure so well while you're begging. Dad gets all uneasy when he sees you in it. Uneasy? Is that what you call it? Mandy asked, grinning. When I'm talking to my mom, I call it uneasy, replied Beth, smiling back. When I see guys look at me or my friends the way Dad looks at you, I call it ogling. Do you think Tim still looks at me that way after all these years? Now you're fishing for compliments, Mom. You know how Dad feels about you. He's putty in your hands most of the time. He'd do anything for you as long as he thought you felt the same way about him. It was the next afternoon when Tim pulled into his driveway. He was feeling low and slightly hungover. He took a deep breath and headed for the front door. He had given his situation a lot of thought. Mandy wasn't going to criticize him and paint him as the villain. He had a form with him that he had found online and printed out. Mandy could threaten him endlessly, but it wouldn't alter a thing. She'd deceived him and their children, with no gloss to pretty it up. Beth welcomed him at the door, taking his coat and heading to the closet. How was your day, Dad? You seem a bit worn out. Are you all right? Not really, sweetie, Tim replied. I'm not sure what you've heard, but I doubt it's accurate. 
I need to talk privately with your mother. We're at a critical point. I've heard all about it, Beth said. Those papers look serious. Mom asked me to bring you to the living room, have a seat in your chair, and get you a cold beer. Trent's already there, and I'll join you with your drink. I don't need a drink, Tim objected, and I don't need an audience. I just need to talk to your mother, and it's better if you kids don't hear. You're mistaken, Dad. Here's your beer, Beth insisted. Mom wants Trent and me to witness everything. She was very adamant. Why? Does she think I'll harm her or something? You both know I'd never hurt your mother. It would be best if you went to visit some friends or something. Mandy declared upon entering the room. Tim, I want our children to be present and attentive to what I'm about to say. They need to understand the consequences of misguided loyalties and stubbornness. Tim retorted, So, you think I'm stubborn? You believe that standing by will and doing what's right caused all our problems? Maybe these divorce papers I've prepared will illustrate how serious I am. I didn't want the kids to overhear, but you're the one who insisted. Mandy assured him, Hand them to me, and I'll sign them immediately. I trust you to be fair if divorce becomes our only option. However, I have an alternative solution in mind. Tim suggested, You should review them and consult a lawyer. I was quite angry when I filled them out so they might be biased. Mandy dismissed his concern, saying, The content of those papers doesn't matter, Tim. I know you. I'm confident you'll always be fair to me. I'm not concerned about any settlement. Mandy approached Tim's chair and knelt before him, explaining, I wanted Trent and Beth here because they deserve an apology almost as much as you do. I was completely wrong, Tim. I deceived all three of you at breakfast yesterday and a few other times. I thought I was assisting my sister, but I see now that I was mistaken. By not being honest and not standing up for what I knew was right, I only made the situation worse. I wish I could undo it all, but I can't. I have to accept my mistake and live with it. Tim's scowl gradually softened into surprise as he listened to Mandy, who knelt before him. Despite his inner turmoil, he couldn't help but notice that she was wearing the yellow sundress he adored. As she leaned forward, her cleavage accentuated, captivating his gaze. Even after nearly two decades of marriage, she remained a cherished vision to him. I'm seeking your forgiveness, Tim, Mandy implored. The children mentioned that if you found it in your heart to forgive me, they would follow suit. I was mistaken, and I acknowledge that. I promise to do everything in my power to never let you down again. I offer you my love and utmost respect. I'll accept your decision without protest, she continued. I lost my way momentarily, but I'm back on track now. Can you find it in your heart to forgive me and rediscover your love for me? Tim gazed at Mandy for a prolonged moment before replying. You've deeply wounded me, Mandy. I never imagined you capable of deceiving me, especially so convincingly. Trust is fundamental in our relationship. Without it, I can't continue. I firmly believe that. Our marriage must be built on respect and unwavering trust. There's no middle ground here. Being trustworthy only sometimes isn't acceptable to me. That's why my misguided attempts to support Dana caused you such pain, and consequently, me too, Mandy responded sincerely. I fear I lack your moral clarity, Tim. While I strive to be good, I recognize I need to be better. From a logical standpoint, there should be no hesitation in telling you the truth every time I speak. I'm asking for the chance to achieve that. I truly love my husband and children. I always will. Words are easy, Mandy. You were in a tough spot and you faltered. You chose the path of least resistance only to realize it wasn't so easy. How can I trust you after this recent debacle? I suppose I'm asking you to trust someone who has a history of dishonesty, Tim. It's a bit of a puzzle, I understand. I'm asking you to recognize that I may not hold the same strong principles as you, but that doesn't mean I lack loyalty or respect. I'm simply human, 
someone who's in love with a man of strong morals. Dad, just take a good look at Mom, Beth interjected. Really look at her. I believe you can see what Trent and I see. Mom wants to remain married and be a part of this family. Trent and I would like that, too. Doesn't she look stunning in that dress? She's your wife, and she's beautiful. Maybe it's time for that private conversation with her now. Tim shifted his gaze from Mandy to his two kids who were smiling. Considering Will's forgiveness towards Dana, could he give Mandy another chance? Turning back to Mandy, he noticed her nervously licking her lips. Tim observed that two top buttons on her sundress had come undone, revealing a significant amount of cleavage. Do you think I'm that forgiving? Will asked the room. Mandy still has a long way to earn my trust back. You're not easy, Dad, but you are a man. Mom basically said anything goes if you accept her apology, Trent pointed out. I think the potential reward outweighs the risk, don't you? Tim grinned at Trent's insight. He looked directly at his wife and inquired, Is that what you're implying, Mandy? Tim and the kids burst into laughter as Mandy blushed and nodded in agreement.